I'm just going to share my story today. You know, once in a while I'm selfish and I share a part of my story with all the shenanigans that I share about. So let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should've seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling, six times failing I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe, trying to do right I got a mission, trying to give back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision From wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong From wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong What's up, mother flowers? JC, Ron the Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss nothing, and leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, it doesn't matter, just leave something. If, listen up, you are part of my Ron the Strong crew. What's up, Rasa? You already know. Pinches malagradecidos. Suban la suburban. Let's put some gas in it so we don't ride and run out of gas. It's really hard talking with a beer, you know, but I always wanted one. It took me 40 years to grow it, but it's all good, vato, you know? It is what it is, guys. I'll pass it back to JC, okay? I'll take you out later. What's up, guys? That's my cousin, Pancho. He's from Moroleon, Guanajuato. I'm gonna share part of my story today. And so I grew up on 26th Street. Oh, shout out to my boy Oso. You know, um, it's my dog right there. I was on the phone with him today. He lives right, right on the, pretty much the street that divides the 2-6 and Land Kings. You know, he, he was uh, banging and slanging all those years with me and um, you know, it was good to talk to him on the phone today and to know that he's he's changed his life, he's out there working, you know, he drives a tow truck and, and doing what's right, man. And that's where I get my biggest payback is when I get calls like that and dudes are seeing what I'm doing and they want to be part of what I'm doing. So, what's up also, man? I love you. It was really good to hear from you today, man. Thank you, man. I need that. I need all that all the time. So... Let's get back into my story. So I grew up on 26th Street. I grew up actually on Christiana, this house right here. And my, my grandparents, my dad, uh, grew up there. They, that's where they lived for years, years. That, we had that house for years in the family. It's on Christiana. On the corner was Armando's uh, grocery store. And I went to McCormick. I went to McCormick School and I went to McCormick Branch because after uh, sixth grade, they would ship you out on the buses to McCormick Branch. McCormick Branch was on the Boulevard on California. I grew up there, man. So I grew up actually watching all the Land Kings, you know, with their hats back, with their leather gloves, black and gold. I, I watched all this throughout my whole childhood. And my dad hung around with a lot of the original Land Kings from back in the day. And... This is, this is where I tell people, because people don't understand the fact that I say I came back home. So I grew up on 26th Street, watched all these Land Kings. All I wanted to be as a kid was a Land King. That's all I wanted to be. You know, I used to see them out there, you know, wearing their war, war sweaters and party shirts. And, you know, and that's what I wanted to be because that's what I grew up seeing and watching. Um, I don't remember too many shootings back then but they were happening obviously because they've always been at war with the two six and it's always been back and forth i for some reason it was in our head that once we got to to uh, ridgeway or central we would turn back around 
when we would be riding our bikes. You know, my best friend back then was Ray. Ray was from 25th and Trumbull. And I'll tell you later on how crazy, you know, life is, but he was like my best friend. I was at his house all the time. He, he was a good, solid dude that, you know, never made fun of my old gym shoes. I, I, uh, I was really, really like a scrub as a kid. My, my dad was always gone. Um, he was always, you know, dating different women and, and just always gone. So my, my, I would wear my shoes until they almost would fall off. That's what got me into the drug game is that I didn't want to feel like that no more. And, and it's why I do like my shoe runs for the kids because you'll be surprised what a, a good pair of sneakers does to a, a kid's like mentality and, and just self-esteem. So, you know, I would wear my shoes until they would fall apart, man. And Ray never judged me, man. Ray was my dog. He, he would go to school with me every day. He was always with me at lunch. And I, would, I, was, I was dating Aurora, his neighbor. And I would always be over there. One way or another, I would always be over there. We would always be riding our bikes. We would always be on 26th Street. So, for those that don't know, you know, K-Town. K-Town is where all the 26 are at. All the streets start with a K, and then you got the Kings on the other side. For those that haven't grown up in that neighborhood, they don't know. It's like a lifestyle. It's like you get used, be, used to being around all these Mexicans and all these Mexican stores. And I, I don't know how to explain it, man, but when I went back, it was, it was one of the happiest moments in my life. Just not because of the gang stuff, because of the culture and the way that I grew up living there in that neighborhood. So it got all, I went all the way up to sixth grade and then my dad started like really, really like disappearing. He would disappear for two or three weeks. I wouldn't see him. And my grandparents would come around after work and check on me. My grandparents, my family have worked at two companies in Chicago, Brock's Candy Factory and Lakewood, Lakewood Fans. That's where they worked. So they were, they were line workers, you know, and right after work, my grandma and my grandpa would stop by see if I was home and they started noticing that my dad was never never home so they stepped in they were like you know what pack your stuff we're taking you to live with us they lived on 59th and Holman so when they took me over there they took me away from 26th street and at the beginning I would still find my way all the way back there because 59 and 26th street is pretty far if you don't have you know a, a car I would get on the bus, I would ride my bike all the way over there. I would still make my way over there somehow or some way. But then I started, you know, hanging out a lot on 59th Street. I started hanging around, you know, with the De La Vegas. You know, they, they, their mom owned a, a hair salon right on 59th and Christiana. Tanti High School is the high school that I started going to. Well, 59 SDs started in 1993. I want to say 93 that summer. I, I am one of the original founders of 59th Street. It was me, Malo, Drag, Looney, Bean, Shorty, and also seven of us. Seven of us started 59th Street. It's 59 and Spalding Saint Disciples. And that's just who I started hanging out with. That's who I started banging with. That's who I started, you know, uh, uh, just doing all the, the mischievous stuff that I was doing, all the all this gang stuff, the street stuff. And that's who became my, my family. And that's who I did all the dirt with. I, I went to prison for multiple times for shootings. And, you know, I still talk to most of those dudes now after everything that happened, Malo being my main dude but um it got to the point where all of us were making money 59 grew pretty big 90s the early 90s was the big year for the saint disciples they spread out like wildfire you know 42nd got big 50th 51st was popping i don't think 51st is there anymore but all these hoods started spraying around cicero started bolingbrook was already you know in the works and and all these hoods started spreading out like wildfire that in the early 90s for the Saint Disciples was a really big, big year. Well, everybody started making money on 59. And with money comes greed, power, envy, comes all these, these bad things that come attached to it. And all of us were slanging, all of us were making money, you know. And, you know, if you guys have followed my story, I've always been pretty, 
I don't even want to call it lucky. I've just always had the right connections and I've always done good. Um, people started hating on me. People started hating on me and my own, who I thought were my own boys, my own boys set me up with a dirty gun in my truck and tried to put me away because that, that would have been my, like my fifth gun. They, they were trying to offer me 63 years for that gun. If I wouldn't have beat that case, I would have been gone forever. But they knew what they were doing when they put that gun in my car. After that, I felt the biggest betrayal ever. And a lot of my dudes, you know, including Marlo, Dean, all of them, they tell me, well, why didn't you say anything? The reason why I didn't say anything was because it was one of the big dudes that had a lot of juice that was doing this. Him and his little, you know, sidekick little fucking puppet. And... I felt betrayed and I was like, man, fuck this. And by then, I was already fucking with Cato big time because we were hustling with the, with the same connect. He was helping me, I was helping him out. Never on that gang shit, it was always about that paper. Well, when that happened, he told me. He's like, that's a sign. That's a sign, homie. That means that that's not, that's not your crew, that's not... I'm pretty sure he was, he, he was like happy to bring me to the side because in Chicago... That's like a straight no, no. You don't flip, especially from folks to people. Yeah, it's 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 very very. A lot of people. Uh, there's been a couple of people who have done it. Most of them are dead. So it's something you don't do. It's very very like looked down upon. They call you a pancake. They call you this. They call you that. But for me, it was a survival. I had to 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 flip in order for me to stay alive in Chicago because in my mind, I still didn't have, I didn't have Arizona in my mind. I didn't have moving away. All I knew was Chicago. All I knew was how to hustle. All I knew was the streets. So, you know, I started hanging out with Ken. He's like, come home. This was your home at the beginning. This needs to be your home now. And the whole betrayal thing, you know, set me on that route. And I went to 25th and Trumbull. I got violated in. They gave me three minutes head to toe. They beat the shit out of me because the dudes that, that were picked to violate me were like huge. Also being one of them, motherfucker. And, you know, I, I turned I turned Land King from 25th and Trumbull. I got the crown tattooed on my neck. I got the 25 on the back of my, my neck. And, you know, a lot of my boys to this day, like I talked to Malo and he told me, he's like, when I heard, I was so hurt because, you know, I was very very involved in 59th street like i was you don't understand like when we started 59th that small little group we were out there 24 7 on the block like on the corner standing up winter summer it didn't matter we were out there and we were fighting everybody that summer we fought the land kings we fought the two six we fought the ambrose we fought everybody everybody the kgbs we the tab boys we were fighting everybody and we managed to survive that summer this is the reason why how i caught so many gun cases and he he told me he's like i was hurt when i heard but then when i told him why in the story he was like yeah you know i i would have you know I, I i didn't know so you had to do what you had to do to survive and i told him i was like i had to survive dog I had to make it one way or another, you know, and then I had all the SDs trying to kill me because word had got out, you know, and I'm on 25th and Trumbull banging now. Most of the Kings don't like me. You know, it was a very small group that I hung around with. You know, it was uh, also Cato, uh, just a couple of them that were like solid ass dudes. And, you know, um, it, I had to do what I had to do to survive. And, and that's the thing. That was plain and simple. It, pretty black and white, man. You know, Chicago, like I've said it before in all my videos, has always been a gangster-ass city. It's always had killings. It's always had shootings. It's always had drugs. And it's always had very high amounts of money. And with that comes a lot of evil and a lot of bad stuff. So that's the way that I had to survive. The only thing that helped me is that I had money and I could buy, you know, my influences here and there in certain areas to get get around the shootings and the violence and stuff like that. But did I live through it? I lived through all of it. And I've been through, I've lost so many 
of my boys throughout this whole whole trip that I call life. Rallo, rest in peace. Cato, rest in peace. You know, all these shorties that got killed. All these, all these innocent bystanders that all that life of chaos left. But that's my story, man. Plain and simple. I had to do what I had to do to survive. Living on the streets of Chicago is no joke. It is a war zone, and this is why they call it Chirac. My name is JC. I am wrong and strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, guys, you only have one life to live, but if you live it right, one life is all you need. Stay your ass out of jail, and I'll catch you guys on the rebound.